You're powering through your toughest workout, feeling unstoppable with your muscles recovering faster and strength skyrocketing. This is the potential of PEG MDF. This revolutionary peptide supercharges muscle repair and enhances growth, helping achieve fitness goals. Join me as we take a deep dive into the cutting edge discovery of PEG MDF, where I'll be sharing all my research and discoveries on this peptide. So before I begin, I'm not a doctor. Please do not take any information in this video as medical advice. Any medical concerns, please consult a doctor. This information is purely for educational and entertainment reasons. So what is this peptide? Well, the common peptide is actually MGF and they add on PGF, which is a polythenol glycol group. I may be saying that wrong, but pretty much that just allows MGF to have a longer half-life or a longer effect in the body. MGF means mechanic growth factor and it's actually a split variant of IGF-1. So pretty much you have IGF-1 in the body and it splits apart in response to broken down muscle. And one of the broken down things is MGF. And MGF can be found in muscles, bones, tendons, and ligaments, but the highest concentration is muscle because MGF plays a crucial role in muscle development. And a last note about the half-life. So MGF's typical half-life is five to seven hours. Adding on the PEG group, makes the half-life 48 to 72 hours. So this way, it has a longer duration or effect in the body. So how does PEG MGF work? Well, how it works, it just goes straight to satellite stem cells, which are found all throughout the body, but especially in muscles, it attaches onto them and helps them grow and repair. And the thing is, this happens all the time when you work out because MGF is found in the body. So this is a great example of how this peptide is truly just from your body, such as like BPC. BPC is just found in your stomach. But anyways, PEG MGF goes and helps activate satellite stem cells, which results in better muscle recovery. And remembering that this is a split variant of IGF-1. So whenever IGF-1 is broken down into your body, a byproduct is MGF. So we're just adding in more MGF, but with PEG to make it last longer in the body. So what are the research benefits of PEG MGF? It helps with muscle recovery. It can aid in muscle growth. Additionally, it has some cardiovascular protection benefits, so, so helping with the heart, and as well as newer protective benefits of helping with the brain. And I think that really comes from muscle, because one thing I've heard a lot is that muscle is the organ of longevity. So what are the research side effects? So from studying the peptide community and just my readings, it seems first, when actually taking the peptide, so through an injection, there can be pain or infection, and that's what actually comes from injecting but actually from the side effect of the peptide, I've seen edema or that's just water retention and as well as blood pressure dropping. So now let's get into the research dosing and cycling. And this one's pretty cool because there's many theories of how this peptide should be used. So I've seen anywhere from 100 to 600 micrograms per injection. Additionally, I've even seen theories out there to actually inject 100 micrograms into every muscle directly because some think that if you can get that straight into the muscle belly, that can have a more local effect. So if let's say the dose was 500, 100 in the shoulder, 100 in the other shoulder, 100 in the quad, that's pretty extreme, but one can take that and use that in a less extreme way. So for example, let's say I wanted to hit my chest, maybe I'll do 500 in my chest and just stick with that instead of splitting up throughout my entire body. But anyways, 100 to 600 micrograms in injection, sub Q, but something intramuscular could be better. And then for the frequency, two to three times a week, and I've seen cycling 10 to 12 days on, four to eight weeks off. But I've also seen people run it very, very long and be completely fine. So to summarize it, 100 to 600 micrograms per injection, either sub-Q, intramuscular is preferred two to three times a week for 10 to 12 weeks on, four to eight weeks off. So let's go to the research timing and benefits. And this one's interesting because it actually took me a minute to understand it, but it's best to use this peptide on rest days or hours after a workout because if used pre-workout, the body's natural IGF-1 will fight for the same receptors of PEG MGF. So that is why on rest days, theoretically, IGF-1 should be maybe a little lower, so this way PEG MGF can come in and have a more potent effect. The second best option from what I've seen is actually post-workout. Now here are some noteworthy supplements I would add, which the main goal of this peptide seems muscle building. So first that would be creatine, 100%, essential amino acids, collagen peptides, 
vitamin D, and as well as some kind of test booster. And here are other peptides that may be combined with PEG, MGF. First would be some kind of growth hormone combination such as testosterone with ipirelin because adding in growth hormone can definitely accelerate muscle building and fat burning effects. Next would be IGF-1 LR3 which that is very powerful for building muscle and I would supercharge PEG MGF. Next possibility would be BPC-157 or TB-500. More I'm thinking that from a recovery standpoint because I'm thinking most people who explore PEG MGF, you know, they're mostly wanting to build some mass. And finally, some other ones to throw in, I don't make this section too long, would be Kiss Peptin 10, more for testosterone. And then as well, maybe looking at AOD 9604 or FRAG 176191, if the main goal is fat burning. As well, 5 amino one mq could be a good option to increase that NAD. And if anything seems confusing, I'm going too fast, please comment down below or join my free academy because I don't want to make this video too long. Now let's go into some of the best lifestyle tools I would add. And obviously first working out, but especially functional training with BFR training. And I found this to be the most amazing thing. So pretty much BFR training is we take a cuff around arms or legs and then if you combine that with corrective training, I think that can supercharge getting very jacked as well as being functional. So what I'm doing anyways, and I really like it, and I've seen results as well, eating very good. So like I'm thinking animal-based diet, raw foods, and some other lifestyle tools would be fascial massages. I really think fascial massages are more beneficial for muscle building than traditional deep tissue massages. Next would be acupuncture, more from a recovery standpoint. Sauna and ice bath, again, more from a recovery standpoint. Next would be red light therapy, again, more from a recovery standpoint. And finally, some kind of magnesium baths or soaks, again, from a recovery standpoint, because I'm guessing if you wanna maximize this, we have to train as hard as possible, and if we can maximize recovery, then that is where we get the growth. So what are the pros of PEG MGF? The first pro is I like how it specifically targets muscle recovery. In addition, this peptide is found in our body and all over our muscles. Another pro is I like how it can be localized. So, you know, some theorized by injecting into different muscles, you can really target that muscle. I think that's really cool and to me it's a pro. Now, what are the cons? The first con is that some theorize doing a intramuscular injection to get the most out of it. And that can be a big turnoff because that definitely requires more skill than just doing a sub-Q injection. Another con, it's a fairly new peptide, so there's still a lot of new research to be done, a lot of unknown of the peptide. And another con could be it only targets muscle repair. So for example, growth hormone peptides do help with muscle repair at a lesser intensity, but they also offer other things such as, you know, well, it's growth hormone, so anti-aging and, you know, longevity. So what's my overall view of this peptide? I think it's a really cool peptide, especially if the main goal is purely muscle recovery, muscle building. I think this peptide has so much potential when it comes to bodybuilding, athletic performance, or even, you know, if someone just wants to get super jacked. But to be honest, personally, if I was new to peptides, I would start with the growth hormone peptides because as I mentioned in the con section, PEG MGF is great, but it highlights just like one aspect really high, you know? So think of like a peptide on a chart, like the growth hormone peptides has like a bigger overlap of all these different benefits where PEG MGF has just like one really high benefit of muscle recovery, which could be very beneficial, but you know, it just could be also more expensive and adding in more injections. But anyways, it's still a great peptide. I think it's really badass. I would start with growth hormone peptides and then add more or experience more if I felt comfortable or I wanted more muscle recovery. Well, anyways, that is my video over PEG MGF. As of this date, I'm still researching, learning, and in the future, I'll be making update videos of what changes, do I like it, do I find something new. If you want to master peptides, I've got a couple options for you guys. You can join my free live peptide event, you can join my free live peptide community, and you also get my book. So. If you want to support me, get my book, please. Join all of them, and that way you can learn more about peptides. And if there's anything that I didn't cover, you can join the group and ask. But anyways, thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, and stick around for future videos.